Hey guys, this is MacHeads101, and today I'm going to be announcing the winner to our 500th video contest giveaway. Um, so, you'll see right here, I'll just put up on the screen the list of correct submissions. We got six of them in the course of two days, which I find pretty impressive. And you'll notice that the first guy who actually answered it correctly, who won, um, didn't leave his YouTube username. So, we have no idea who that is, but I have his email address because he left that, and uh, so I'm going to send him the gift card, and he won fair and square. Uh, but that's just kind of funny. Anyway, um, so we got six correct submissions, which I think is pretty impressive, but I think I want to step it up a little bit, and now I'm going to teach you guys all basically what I believe is the easiest way to go about solving this problem. Now, what I'm about to show you is not the best way to solve the problem by any means, and it's not even the most efficient way, it's not the most clear way. Well, it may be the most clear way, because it's pretty obvious why it works, but my intent is to make it so simple that uh, you can immediately get it even if you're not very good at math or programming and you don't really have to think about the problem that much you just have to do a little bit with the problem so I'm gonna go ahead and um, show you my screen and here's the here's the contest page so we had source code in a couple different languages to check if a key was correct and here's the Java code and I'm gonna be using Java for this just because it's pretty straightforward and it's a pretty universal language so here's the two methods that my Java program uses to check if a key is the solution. And this alone, what can we use this for? Well, we can go through every combination and check if each combination is the solution, uh, which is obviously not the most efficient way to solve the problem, but I'm going to show you how to do it first, and I'm going to show you a pretty brute force way of implementing it, too. It's not even a good way of coding it, but it's a very clear way of coding, and it's obvious why it works. So. Here's the program thus far, and I'm going to be developing this with you guys in this video so that you see how we can make this way more efficient. And maybe I'll show you how to structure the code better, but we don't really have to worry about that. So right now I have literally 11 nested for loops. Uh, don't do this in general, but if you're given a problem like this and you have to solve it in about 5 minutes or 5 or 10 minutes, you can just drop down and create 11 for loops pretty quickly and it'll work fairly well. Um, but alternatives to this are you can use recursion. If you actually look at the equations, you, you only need a couple nested for loops. It doesn't need to be that bad. But just copying and pasting out the for loops is not the end of the world. Um, but don't do it in real practice, especially if you're making an actual program. Here it's fine. So this program right here is literally a bunch of nested loops. And what that does is it iterates through every value of A, and then within that it iterates through every value of B. It, it, it brute forces the solution and it checks every key to see if it's correct. Um, and right as this is, it'll probably take a long time to solve the problem. But we can go ahead and add certain conditions to these loops that actually make it a lot faster. So I'm going to look at the equation list here real quick. And you can see here's a, if d, d divided by e is an a, then it returns false. So right away we know d divided by e is a. So in this loop after e, we can say if d over e is not equal to a, continue. And what this does is, it runs this if statement, and then if d divided by e is an a, it does a continue which jumps to the next iteration of the for loop, thus bypassing all of these inner loops. So it'll only ever run these inner, loop, inner loops now if the first five numbers are basically correct. And I can add one more guy here. Uh, how about I do uh, b mod c is not equal to e, and I do a continue, because that's also, it only uses the first five. And here now are my two conditions, which are very nice at checking the first five outer loops. And these will already probably speed it up quite a bit. Um, one thing to note is I can't divide by zero, so I'm going to make this start at one, and I can't mod by zero, so I'm going to make this start at one. Um, but you would get an, ex an, ex an exception otherwise, so you would probably figure that out immediately anyway. So what we're doing is we're doing a brute force, but then we're breaking out of loops if uh, if conditions are starting to be failed, starting to fail to be met. Um, and now I can do, let's see, another one. Here we got d minus g um, is equal to c. So I can go down into this g and see if d minus g is not equal to c, I can do a continue. And note that I'm only referencing these variables once I'm down far enough in the level where all of the variables um, are exposed, where they all exist. So I, I go all the way down to G, and then I can put this guy in here because it accesses no things higher than G. And obviously I can 
alleviate this by moving around the loops with respect to each other, but um, so far we've only inserted three lines of code to the very basic brute force program. And let's see the difference that it makes. So I'm going to run this Java program, and you should probably know how to run a Java program, but if you don't, these are the commands in terminal to do it. Run Java and then the class name. And let's see how long it takes. It took about um, a second to find the solution and then a couple more seconds to figure out that there were no other solutions. So I just basically showed you how to write the most, well, it's the, it's the most bad, it's the worst way to write a brute force program, let's just put it that way. And then I showed you how to insert basically three lines of code to it. The code is still pretty messy and it could be cleaned up a whole lot. Um, and it doesn't need to be a bunch of nested for loops or anything like that. But nevertheless, this already solves the problem fairly quickly. And you can, if you look at the problem enough and use all the conditions, you can make it go pretty much instantly and deplete all the things. Um, but just with three conditions, you can make it pretty good. And it would be better if we moved around the loops a little bit. Uh, but anyway, um, this was our contest giveaway. This was a tutorial on how to solve it as well. So thanks for watching MacHeads101. Um, if you have any questions, leave a comment below, subscribe, and goodbye.